building is a great example of administrative burden. Now, right now, if you're trying to build a new home, they figure it's about $127,000 worth of permits and additional work you need in order to get that home built because there's so much red tape to do it. And typically it takes one to two years just to go through that process. And so streamlining this at a provincial level and a federal level is very, very important. You know, we've seen this problem come because of governments that add more and more regulation without taking it away because they don't have an organization or a dedicated minister specifically to removing that. One of the other things we're going to do is increase the amortization for up to 30 years and remove the stress test, which is causing a lot of people to have to go to third markets. We want the federal government back in the business of building affordable homes. I worked for condo developers for the past five years. I know that the for-profit corporations are not in a position to be buying, building affordable housing without government support, and that's why they haven't been doing it. So we have a commitment to build half a million affordable homes across Canada, including in this community, uh, in the next 10 years. We also will be offering a $5,000 a year supplement to renters, to about half a million renters across Canada, in order to top up those rental rates so that they can pay in hot markets like this one is here. Correction, the federal government is back in the business of housing. We introduced the National Housing Strategy in November of 2017, and CMHC has been tasked with implementing that plan. It's a $55 billion strategy over 10 years, and in this community, we help shape that strategy, and I'm really proud of us for doing that work. Those units, and there's 2,000 that we need here in Peterborough, which we can build in two years by tapping into that housing strategy, will be built by the private sector, like those here in this room. We know how long it takes to build units. You know how long it took to build a hotel that we lived on the parkway. This will take more than two years, and when we lie to people, and we lie to people on a regular basis and tell them that their hopes and their chances get up there, and then they fail, they fail in government, and they feel that as a government, we're failing them. This is something we can't lie to them. We need to have a practical approach, which is based on fact, not fairy tales. Second, impossible. I'm not interested in all the ways that something can be done. I'm interested in how we as a community have come together, dream big, and achieve the impossible over and over and over again. We can build 2,000 units of affordable housing in this community in two years if we all believe that we can do so by working together. I'm committed to that. I think telling people who need a safe and affordable roof over their heads that we're going to remove the stress test as a way of helping them is misleading, unhelpful, and not the job of a responsible member of parliament. Michael. So first of all, the stress test obviously is for people to buy a home. I'm pretty sure the people in Tent City aren't ready to buy a home. They need to get rental properties. What we need to do is make sure developers are able to build properties, and they can't right now because the red tape is so high. We've seen the provincial government staff more and more regulations on top of it to the point where it's impossible to get these homes built in a fast amount of time. We need to make sure we reduce the red tape at the provincial level, make sure we don't create more red tape at the federal level, and make sure things are in place to do that. Uh, thirdly, what we want to make sure is that demand is not outpacing supply. And the fact is that it is right now. Uh, when we have an immigration rate of between 300 and 350,000 annually, with at least 40% of those settling in two of our largest urban areas, it should come as no surprise that the housing markets in those areas are in increasing rapidly. We want to make sure that our immigration rate is in line with the rest of the Western world, with very few exceptions. We have the highest per capita immigration rate of any Western or European nation. And the fact is that we don't think that that is sustainable. It's certainly not sustainable for our housing market. Thank you. In fact, the Green Party of Canada has committed to um, the funding of 25,000 new units every year and 15,000 refurbished units of affordable housing constructed for the purpose of uh, affordable rental. Um, and that is something that we've committed to every year. We would also like to um, assist with Canadians uh, in terms of rental assistance to the tune of $750 million every year. Um, and of course, we'd also like to uh, employ the guaranteed livable income, and maybe you've heard something about that. We'd like to make sure that every Canadian can always have the stability and dignity of their home, no matter what happens. So the first way we're going to do that is things like what's happening up to Clean Tech Commons. Our plan will allow for major polluters to pay into a Green Tech Fund, which will be used 100% for new innovation. We're going to take that money, multiply it by putting it into venture capital, and provide that capital for innovators and entrepreneurs to actually create new clean tech solutions. 
We're then going to work with them to make sure those solutions are patented and make sure that we can not only help Canadian companies, because we know that only 1.6% of the carbon is going from Canada. What I'd like to see is 10% of our carbon emissions reduced around the world. And we would do that by making sure the solutions are based here in Canada. Also, no, we have to combat the climate crisis as quickly as possible. Uh, if you look at the economy in BC, it's booming, and they've had a carbon tax in place for a decade. Uh, it's proven to work. I understand that the business, uh, sorry, that the burden is unduly sometimes on small businesses. We need to find ways to work with you to make sure that it uh, it works for you and not against you. So I'd like to draw your attention to Mission Possible, which is the Green Party's climate uh, policy. It's been uh, published since about February, and it presents 20 points of policy that are um, enactable immediately. Uh, and what this uh, one, one of the two or uh, one big point that has been included in this, and I'll and I'll try to uh, elaborate on it for you, is adopting biodiesel. You see, uh, over the next 10 years, um, while we're working towards reducing our greenhouse gas emissions by 60%, um, we would like to stop the oil imports from other nations. We have enough here in Canada. And what we'd like to see is the adaptation of local biodiesel production. This means that um, if you had to, for some reason, operate diesel machinery, you could be buying repurposed vegetable oil from that restaurant. Uh, so we think what we need uh, right away is a safe consumption site. I know it's not always a popular idea. Um, we need treatment facilities here in Peterborough. We need, uh, we need to look at safe supply. We absolutely need to decriminalize, but already the Peterborough police are acting uh, in that way to ensure that people are not being unduly criminalized for, uh, for their addiction. Um, and we need to make sure that we have head-to-toe universal health care and that mental health is included in that. Interventions like safe consumption sites are proven to work. Mr. Shear saying that he thinks they are a terrible idea is a really bad idea because people are going to die. What Mr. Shear said was that safe injection by itself is a terrible idea because all you're doing is delaying death. We need to take safe injection sites and put them with wraparound services together. You need to have both sides. Just giving people a safe supply of drugs and not helping them get off their addiction isn't going to do anything. Candice, you um, I, don't, I don't know about this, but uh, the Conservatives uh, keep saying delaying death is, is all that we're doing with safe consumption sites. Literally all any of us are doing is delaying death. I don't think the Conservative government has found a solution to mortality. I appreciate your thoughts there, but I think that we can't treat people who are dead. So the first thing we do is delay death. And small business owners should not be shouldering that burden. That is not your job. That is the government's job to take care of our citizens and ensure that they are treated before their addictions put them in a position where it becomes a burden on the small businesses.